Hi, this is Dr. A with a ClinChem review video over gonadal function. We're going to look at disorders of the ovaries. So let's first look at menstrual cycle abnormalities. So amenorrhea is the absence of menses. It can be either primary or secondary. So primary amenorrhea, um, the female has never had a cycle. Um, the most common causes of primary amenorrhea are at the hypothalamus level, and then it would be ovarian, and then it would be uterine dysfunction. So um, it would be, have to be assessed accordingly. Uh, secondary amenorrhea, a female has had a cycle, but it stopped for at least for th three to six months. The most common causes are going to be at the hypothalamic level. Then the next common cause is PCOS, or polycystic ovary syndrome. Then pituitary causes and then ovarian causes of secondary amenorrhea. There's also oligomenorrhea that is infrequent or irregular menstrual bleeding with cycle lengths that are in excess of 35 to 40 days or uterine bleeding that is in excess of 7 days which is called menorrhagia. Uh, you can have hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. So again, hypogonadotrophs, so that's the GnRH and lack of GnRH or LH and FSH. And then hypogonadism then means that the gonads are at the ovary level, then you wouldn't have the release of the estrogen and progesterone. So if you have a deficiency of FSH and LH, then it can cause a secondary amenorrhea due to the lack of the production of the sex, sex steroids, so the estrogen and progesterone. So remember the role, um, if you look in the previous video on uh, ovarian function, then the, the role of the estrogen and progesterone, one is the estrogen matures up the egg, the progesterone gets the urine line and ready for implantation. So if these guys aren't present, then um, there's not a, a cycle to be had. Estrogen um, not only matures up egg but it also builds up the uterine lining um, and so if that if estrogen is not there it's not going to happen. Um, the hypogonadotropic hypogonadism can be caused by weight loss especially uh, intense weight loss, intense exercise, and pituitary tumors. What would, why would weight loss cause it especially extreme weight loss is um, basically if your body um, senses that there are not not enough nutrients around to maintain a pregnancy then it will shut down uh, reproductive function so that's what weight loss the signals that weight loss could cause uh, at least excessive or rapid weight loss then you would have hypergonadotropic hypogonadism so again that would be ovarian failure with the elevation of fsh so hypergonadotroph that your gonadotrophs are lh fsh and stuff. So um, this can occur naturally as women enter menopause, the ovaries just quit working. Uh, but if it happens before 40, it could be caused by some chromosomal abnormalities, such as Turner syndrome, or a premature menopause. Um, and so there you might want to check for other endocrine gland failures. Um, maybe there's been an injury to the pituitary or something like that, and it's also affecting the thyroid or the adrenal glands and stuff like that. Um, and then um, polycystic ovary syndrome is quite common and ca can cause menstrual cycle abnormalities. So uh, this syndrome pr presents with infertility, so inability to get pregnant, hirsutism, so that's uh, like facial hair, um, chronic anovulation, so uh, the woman is not ovulating, not releasing those eggs, glucose intolerance, so it's linked to like type 2 diabetes, so we would have like hyperglycemia hyperlipidemia or dyslipidemia and um, hypertension so high blood pressure the cysts are present in the ovaries only in 70 percent of patients which is still the majority of patients um, and it can often be reversed with weight loss and increased activity um, generally patients with polycystic ovary syndrome are overweight or obese and uh, if they don't have type 2 diabetes they might be pre-diabetic so a little bit on hirsutism, it is an abnormal, abundant, androgen-sensitive terminal hair growth. So there would be hair um, like on, on the lip, chin, sideburn regions, neck, chest, abdomen, upper back, lower back, and thighs. Um, the cause is most commonly idiopathic or it can be PCOS. PCOS. Uh, should uh, all, only be considered in the context of the women's ethnic origins. So some women might have just naturally a little bit of facial hair, and it's just it's not uh, a problem. It's not 
pathology. Um, do you, you can measure it using the Fairman Gall Galloway scale, so you evaluate nine areas, the ones just mentioned, uh, and you allot points on a scale of one to four based on the hair thickness and the pigmentation, and a score of greater than eight is consistent then with a diagnosis of hirsutism, which then could be related potentially to PCOS. So a little bit on a diagnostic approach to amenorrhea. So always test for pregnancy first. So that would be the most obvious cause of a lack of a menstrual cycle, especially in a woman that's been menstruating pretty regularly. So always check for pregnancy first. Now, if the woman is not pregnant, then you want to get some body measurements, height and weight to see uh, if they're overweight and stuff. Uh, serum prolactin, FSH, uh, TSH levels and or testosterone levels if indicated. So if they are either obese or very thin, not thin, sorry, consider nutritional interventions. If the prolactin is elevated, then you need to rule out hypothyroidism, drugs and renal failure and do an MRI of the hypothalamus and pituitary um, and treat with dopamine agonists. So if the prolactin is elevated, you could have a prolactinoma. That's why you want to do an MRI to check to see if there's a tumor there. If the FSH is elevated, then you want to consider ovarian failure and maybe do an estrogen progesterone replacement therapy. If the testosterone is high, but less than 200 nanograms per deciliter, it is ovarian hyperandrogenism, and you need to treat it with oral contraceptives. If the testosterone is higher than 200 nanograms per deciliter, you want to do a pelvic ultrasound and adrenal CT to see uh, you, you'll be looking for some tumors and all that that might be uh, secreting testosterone. If uh, there's a history of DNC, which is what would be done after a miscarriage or uh, an abortion, and you have normal prolactin and FSH, you could do a trial of estrogen and progesterone to try to stimulate withdrawal of bleeding, uh, and, or it could be Asherman's syndrome. Uh, what are the causes of infertility? Uh, so if the defect level is at the hypothalamus, then you would see low uh, gonadotropin releasing hormones and it could be caused by drugs, increased stress or diet. Um, if it is at the pituitary level, then you would see low FSH and LH and it could be a tumor or a lesion on the pituitary. If the defect level is at the ovaries, you would see low estradiol or low progesterone, uh, and you would co uh, consider ovarian failure, ovarian dysgenesis, anti-ovarian antibodies, malnourishment, very low weight, and metabolic diseases, so that would be things like diabetes. Um, if the defect level is at the fallopian tubes in uterus, um, you could have an inadequate endometrium, uh, tubal scarring and closure, or decreased cervical mucus. Um, and so with the inadequate endometrium, you could have a low progesterone output. Tubal sc scarring and closure could be caused by PID, pelvic inflammatory disease. So having STDs or STIs that basically are so recurrent that it scars up and closes up the fallopian tubes. And uh, if you have decreased cervical mucus, it's because possibly of cervical infections, again, related to um, STDs, STIs. Uh, and then if the defect level is at conception, so you can basically ovulate uh, and, and all that, everything else is fine. Maybe what is happening is the sperm is being destroyed while it's in the female because there's a presence of anti-sperm antibodies. And lastly, on estrogen replacement therapy, it does remain a contentious issue. The Women's Health Initiative study found uh, the following in 16,000 postmenopausal women who underwent estrogen replacement therapy. They saw an increased incidence of invasive breast cancer in venous clot formation, so it's dangerous. Uh, no benefit at all in helping with cognitive decline or coronary artery disease. So it does not help your heart, nor does it help you keep your mental facilities. Uh, and they saw a reduction in um, bone loss, colon polyp formation, and menopausal symptoms, hot flashes, vaginal dryness. So um, 
there's some risk and some benefits. The, obviously, the reduction in bone loss uh, is a good thing, and the reduction in colon polyp formation and reduction in menopausal symptoms could all seem to be beneficial. But of course, the higher risk of invasive breast cancer and blood clots uh, is enough to detract people from, uh, re, you know, widely recommended anyway estrogen replacement therapy. So it does remain a treatment option in selected women after risk counseling. Uh, and so it needs to be really considered, everything needs to be considered in um, benefits and risk weighed accordingly. That is it, thank you.